folks, how's it going? 64-Bit Math here with another video. Now, this one's slightly different than what I usually do. Usually I kind of stick between either doing pickup videos or Game Gladiator videos. Um, this one's kind of a pickup video, but it's also a little bit more. I recently came across this big burly box. Uh, it's called the Super Chair, and I'll get in a second into more what it is. Um, but yeah, this video is going to be about the Super Chair for the original Nintendo, and it's going to consist of four parts. First, I'm going to kind of talk to you quickly about what it is and how I came across it. Then, the second part, I'll get a bit more into the history of it. Now, the history of it is kind of murky. It's kind of a hard-to-find item. Not much info out there. So, I'll share whatever info I found with you, um, but it's kind of a educated guesstimate as to what the history is because there's not a lot out there but I'll get more into that in, in a minute or two and third I'll actually show you the assembly of it because as you see it's in a uh, carrying case but it actually becomes much more so I'll show you how it becomes what it is I guess and then the fourth part I'll show it in action so that way I kind of give a well a pretty good idea of the super chair as a whole now you might not want to listen or see all four parts. So what I'll do is in the description below, I will put uh, timestamps down there for where each part begins. So that way you can just watch the parts you want or however you want to do it. So we'll begin with how I got it. Um, I had never heard of the Super Chair before I seen this one. And it was on a local classified site. It was up on a Monday and I actually emailed and called the guy on the Tuesday which I thought it was going to be gone by then but I didn't see it till the Tuesday anyway he was an older gentleman said that he had it for 10 years he picked it up at a garage sale uh, figured he'd throw it up on the classified website and he was asking a hundred dollars for it that's a hundred Canadian because I'm from Canada and so I, I didn't even haggle with him I didn't have any information about it I just thought it was really cool. So I said I'd pay him his full asking price. And so I couldn't make it that evening. I went in on the Wednesday. And he said after he talked to me, he had about two or three other people phone or email him uh, trying to backdoor the deal. They'd ask him if he'd take a little bit more to uh, break the deal with me. But he was a pretty cool guy. He said no, he wasn't going to do that. He held it for me. Um, I think because I had matched his original asking price. So anyway, he held it for me. I picked it up. Um, I literally that was like two days ago. So I don't have a ton of experience with this thing yet. Again, I've just been trying to find info and play around with it a little bit. I have set it up. I know that it works, um, but by no means am I talented with it yet. I think it would take a lot of time to become talented with this thing. But anyway, the main thing is that's how I got it. Um, I wasn't really given much history because he got it at a garage sale, but overall I was happy with the price and so far I'm really happy with the chair itself. Um, as mentioned, it's called the Super Chair, it's for the original Nintendo, and it's a chair that's a controller. And I'll get more into showing you how it sets up and how it plays, but that's the gist of it. Alright, so on to the history part of it. Now as I mentioned before, his, uh, the recorded history on these things is scarce. Um, there's not a lot of info on it. There is some online, um, but even after spending a good evening or two trying to piece it all together, it it's at best an educated guess, I guess you could say. <laughs> I don't really know how else to word it. Um, so take any information that I'm giving you with a grain of salt. It's the best information I could find but maybe it's not 100% proven, accurate, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to share what I found with you as far as the history goes. So in regards to the Super Chair, there are other ones out there, um, but they're pretty hard to find. Exactly how rare, again, I don't know. Well, when I was doing my research, I maybe came across six different models across the internet. And the reason for that is what I've been led to believe is that the super chair was created and it, there were different ones 
made to take to conventions and just different shows around North America. It was originally built in Japan, uh, but while there were models created for conventions and um, gaming expos and technology expos and stuff like that, the, pro the example ones were made, but it never actually saw full production. So while there are examples out there, there's not a lot of them because it was never fully produced for a retail sale. And what kind of backs up this theory, or makes me believe it, is that every model of the super chair I've seen, they're all slightly different. Now some of them are pretty polished, or they look like they're ready for sale like this one. Uh, it comes with the carrying case. Some of them have manuals, this one doesn't. Uh, but it has the case, the chair itself, it works. Um, it's pretty much ready to be sold. Um, but what makes me believe that they were just demo units and never fully produced is everyone that I found uh, pictures of for the super chair is slightly different. Some of them look quite similar, but there's a lot of little differences, whether it's different bags, uh, different color peg covers, different seat materials, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's what kind of backs it up for me is that there are some examples out there. They're all slightly different, um, and yeah, they're just really hard to find. So, again, I don't think it ever hit retail, but it must have came pretty close. Alright, so on to more of the actual history of the super chair itself. Um, from what I've been led to believe, they did um, begin in Japan by a company called the Sang Harem Trading Company. I'll probably put that here because I probably said it wrong. Uh, but that was around 88, 89. Um, they began production, or creation over there, I should say. And it was brought to North America. It was, as far as, far as North America is concerned, it was brought over for conventions, demonstrations, to kind of hype up the product. It wasn't being sold yet or anything. Um, and that's where the North American models that are found came from. Um, they were just demo units. Uh, and I found two other companies in North America that have their names uh, attached to the super chair. So again, it was the Sangharam Training Company in Japan. But when they brought them over, the names, the companies that I found that were attached to it were Alpha Research in Yucca Valley, California, USA, as well as the Winchester Data Pro Products Incorporated in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, when looking into them, I found that the Winchester Data Products Incorporated company no longer exists. Uh, I think they closed their doors in 2004. And I looked into the Alpha Research one. There is still a company in California called Alpha Research, but there was no way of telling if it's the exact same one that was tied to the super chair or not. So, kind of a dead end. But, anyway, I'm guessing those two companies were in talks with the Sangharam Training Company about possibly handling the production or um, yeah, just distribution maybe once the product was set for retail release in North America. But again, I don't believe the retail release ever happened. So as far as the Super Chair is concerned, I have the one for the original Nintendo and again, wasn't really released. But it was also stated for a release on the Sega Genesis as well as home computers in North America. And the evidence that I have for this, or that they were at least planning this, um, I found a picture of a little information card. I don't know if it's a registration card or not, um, but I'll show a picture of it here. And as you can see in the fine print, it says Sega Genesis and home computers, which is pretty cool. Um, again, never really got released for the Genesis or the home computer, but it's neat seeing that they had plans to eventually hit all three, the NES, Genesis, and home computers. Um, but one little information tidbit that I found out was that it was actually released for a system, and that is the Sega Mega Drive. Now, again, I was led to believe it's been released. Don't hold me accountable for that information, but I believe it was released for the Mega Drive, just sales were very poor and it was a very limited release because there are models like you can buy it for the Mega Drive but it's very hard to find and it will 
cost you a bit because it's quite rare. So, yeah, I believe it was released for the Mega Drive officially, whereas the other ones it wasn't, but there was plans to eventually do a retail release. All right, so now that we kind of got the history and information part aside, but yeah, Super Chair, let's unbox it. So, just gotta unzip the sides of the bag. This zipper is a little bit tight, but again, it's probably just because it's, well, 20 years old, 30 years old. Yeah, however old it is. So, opens up. And as you can see, it's all in pieces. There's the seat bottom. There is the legs. As mentioned, it says the crocodile on there. So that's your foot pegs. It's got the back of the seat here. Or yeah, well it's the bottom and the back. And then it's got the actual very base of the chair, which has the internals of the controller in this part, and of course the attached cord. So what I'll do now is I'll take all the pieces out and I'll assemble it. All right, so the base is there. Uh, all you do to begin is you pull these arms up and then they got a little spot to tighten them here. Tighten those up. It's actually pretty easy to set it up. That's one bonus of this controller, easy assembly. Um, so yeah, that post goes in there. Then this post simply, or peg simply slides in. And you can adjust it depending how tall you are. But I'm just going to set it roughly where it looks like it should normally go. And then the actual seat. There's three screws. You simply put those in the holes and then slide it back. And you are officially set up. That's the chair. And then the person simply sits in it like this. Feet go up here. And yeah, each post has three buttons. There is a top button on each, a front button, and a back button. This one is select. This other one is start. Uh, one of these is A, the other one's B, and then I believe rapid fire. And then, yeah, so. And again, the D pad controls are controlled by the seat. So you move back to go back, forward to go forward, and then left and right. Um, there's a little bit of extra play in the seat, but you can tell when you start leaning one way enough, you can feel it actually pressing down on the base, so that's when you would actually know that you're making enough contact to move. So anyway, that's the it assembled, that's how it assembles, and now we'll go on to part number four, which is actually using it with a game. One thing I forgot to mention when I was doing the setup is, and I, again, I don't know if this is every model, just my model, or whatever, but under here, where this piece connects and then controls the D-pad, it probably won't show up too well, but um, there is some looseness. Now, it's not the actual D-pad part that's giving way and being loose. It's where this casing hugs the metal pole that it slides onto. And I'll try and show you with one quick hand here. See it's that pull, and it's kind of loose. So it's more of a by design that it's wobbly. It's not an actual overly worn thing, but yeah. So you're probably going to see me bouncing around like crazy on there. Don't think that I'm trying to be too hard on it or overemphasize it for the video. That's just the way the chair is. But yeah. Let's get to trying an NES game or two. 
All right, so we have the Super Chair all set up. Original Nintendo we're running with. There's a lot of cords. That's just because I'm also recording with the Dazzle. Um, I have used the Retron 5 with the Super Chair. Works fine. Um, but yeah, I just have it hooked up to the original Nintendo. And anyway, we're going to play a few games. First one is Tiger Heli, which is the style that it was kind of meant to be played with. Um, which is a shooter going up. So, let's try Tiger Heli. Alright. So, start button over here on the side. Start. And going. And, oh, I used the bomb already. Anyway, so, left. Shoot. Oh. Up. Get it right. Ah. As you can see, it's kind of hard to get it to respond in time with what you want, because you can see what you're supposed to do, but by the time you actually get it leaning enough to respond, it, it adds an extra element of uh, challenge to it. But all directions work. Um, I'm using this side to shoot the gun, whereas this other one, uh, one is the bomb, which I just didn't need right. Ah. Yeah. So we'll try one more time here. As you can see, back, forward, um, left, right. So like I said, it's mostly because the cover part isn't, ah, I was talking, mostly because this metal sheath is almost not tight enough to the inside pole, which I can see why they did that so it comes off easily, but I might put some tape around the inside pole just to stiffen it up, just so that it responds quicker to movements, I don't know, I'll have to try that sometime. But yeah, that's Tiger Heli, which is that kind of game or racing games that's what this chair I'm pretty sure was designed for give you that feeling that you're actually driving or flying but Tiger Heli now for a game that this chair most certainly probably was not designed for but I'm going to try it anyway Super Mario Bros 3 get some side scrolling action going here Start, start, all right, world one, yeah. move right, move up, all right, Oop. and it's not too bad, it's definitely an extra challenge again, oh, okay. just when I had that, um, because you got to be kind of um, careful or calculated with your movements. Um, you can just lean to the right here ah, and then try and speed through it, but you're going to fall in the hole. We'll try that again. That way. Up. All right. Yeah. That's the thing. Right now, the biggest, the hardest thing is doing calculated movements with this thing so I can see why it was never mass produced um, as it in its current state it's just too hard to be effective like this is world one dash one and it's pretty tough with this thing we'll give it one more go I don't want to spend too much time on each game but calculated this time ah yeah so as you see the super chair works 
with any game because it's just got a regular controller port and and it'll technically work as a controller for any game um, in theory but its effectiveness is not there <laughs> for pretty much any game but yeah anyway so that's Super Mario Bros 3 I guess if you really like a challenge then this is the accessory for you if you really feel like mastering something that no one else in this world probably has bothered to or sees the necessity in this is the bad boy for you anyway there's one more game that I want to try and that is for my good friends at Nintendo Age um, they mentioned that it was like the first game they mentioned when I seen when they seen that I had this chair and that is Contra for the NES let's see how that goes Alright, so let's give this a try. Up, up, down, oh no. No, I'm gonna try that again. You gotta try the Konami code. So, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. No, it says three. One more try. I can do this. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. Ah. No, I didn't do it. And I don't know which one's B and A. And I'm just going to go through with this. That one, shoot, jump. Ah. Whoa. All right. Oh. Ah, oh, no. The angle shooting is in impossible. Well, not impossible, but it's, it's definitely going to be tough. Can I do an angle shot? Oh yeah, see, I did I did a few there. Oh, I should keep going. Oh, just about. Oh, back into the thing. Again. Oh, come on. This thing was not meant for Contra. One more time. Press, oh no, oh dang it. I got too confident in my super chair abilities. Oh. Oh. Just about. I'm just gonna go past it. Alright, jump up there. Oh, I completely didn't see the gun. I could keep trying Contra, but I'm pretty sure you get the idea of how it will go. But yeah, that's Contra, Super Mario Bros. 3, and Tiger Heli. I'd like to say that at the game it was designed for, I did better, but I really didn't. It is definitely a challenging controller, but even though it's so difficult it's fun like maybe the novelty will wear off at some point maybe it'll be just a controller I bring out when me and my friends are getting drunk I don't know but for right now I am very happy that I found this it's it's unique it's fun it's odd I like it but yeah that's the super chair uh, feel free to comment in the sections below or in the section below what you think of it, if you've seen one of these, um, if you know any of the history behind it, please let me know. I'm still trying to figure that all out. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you folks with another video soon. So, later.